Welcome back to the Angry Man Podcast with Jason and Greg. Got my guy back in the building, Corey Spinks. Corey, man, how's it going, bro? It's going all right, man. Just a little good, relaxed day, you know? Yeah, man, I feel you. So the last time we had you on the show, man, it was a hit. Uh, people enjoyed your commentary and your analysis, so I definitely wanted to get you back on the show and get your thoughts. So last time you were on the show, we talked a little bit about Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. The fight has now happened, and Crawford won in dominant fashion, which was quite surprising to me and a lot of people. So I wanted to get your thoughts on it. I know you talk, you spoke a little bit about the defense of both fighters. Uh, both of them get hit. Uh, but I didn't expect Terrence Crawford to, to be doing all the hitting, to be honest with you. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think, you know, Terrence Crawford, you can't take nothing away from him. He's a bad boy, man. Yeah. You know, um, but – I, I think that he did get the full Earl Spence. You know what I'm saying? Earl Spence was, you know, dehydrated, you know, um, because, you know, he already said he couldn't make that weight, but he did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's not an excuse. He shouldn't have got in there. But it's not to say it wouldn't have been the same outcome, but, you know, that's my analysis on the fight. But Terrence Crawford, a, a bad boy, he did what he had to do. He got the job done. So speak to dehydration a little bit, because I know you've been in the ring before. How does dehydration affect you when you're in the ring? Well, it, 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 your, your equilibrium was already messed up. That's why he was he was falling so easily with the jab and all that, you know? Yeah. He, he, his equilibrium was off, you know? Yeah, so, yeah I feel you. Know, you. So I, 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 I've been through it, so I know. I first know exactly. Exactly, exactly. So let me... Let me ask you about this. So there's Terrence Crawford got a number of different options. Uh, he was just on the Breakfast Club. He talked about some of those options. Uh, Javante Davis is is somebody he spoke spoke about. Now he did say that Javante was too small, but did say also that he would entertain a fight with him at 147 pounds, which I thought was interesting. Uh, he spoke a little bit about Canelo Alvarez and would be interested in fighting him if he would come down to 158, which we know Canelo today fights at 168 and has fought as high as 175. And then, of course, Jamel Charlo is an opponent that he's been talking about for a while. What do you think about those three opponents? And then I want to ask you a follow-up question on that. Um, I think the all really all good matchups. See, um, Terrence Crawford just want to fight the best of the best. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't blame him. I don't blame him, you know. Um, you know, um, I don't think he should take a step back, like, um, you know, into fighting Boots. You know, he's, yeah. he, he's, 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 he's bigger than Boots, you know, mm -hmm. as far as, like, popularity. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it went to another level, so, like, him fighting Boots in is going to be a step back. Do you think, and I was going to ask you that, Boots in is, and I get what you're saying in terms of popularity. I totally understand that. But if Terrence Crawford stays at 47, do you think he should fight Jerron Ennis? Because he's willing to fight Tank Davis, who's moving up from 135 to 147. Why not fight who your mandatory is at 147? And do you think Ennis would be a challenge for, for Terrence Crawford? I, I think it'll be a, a good, good matchup, you know, um, I think it'll be a good matchup, but you know, Terrence Crawford. I mean, Terrence Crawford into getting the big, big bucks. Yeah. You know, he want to fight. He want to fight fighters that's 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 going to generate them big, big bucks. You know, as as he deserves. You know what I'm saying? So he he made it. You know, he's a he's a two time undisputed champion. So Facts. he deserved it. You know, he deserved to try to call his own shots. Which one would you rather see him in the ring with out of those four opponents if you had to choose next and what and at what weight? I, I would say um Jamel Charlo. I like to see him fight Jamel Charlo. Um the fight with Canelo, I don't know. I think he he still he he it'd be a it, that'll be a, a ter terrific fight, but I would like to see him and Charlo because of the bad blood. Yeah. So I I think that's a great point. You have experience moving up in weight. If I'm not mistaken, you moved up and faced Jermaine Taylor at middleweight, if I remember correctly. How did you yeah. feel moving up in weight like that? And do you think that that's a good idea for someone like Terrence Crawford? Well, not to keep jumping. It, it becomes a point where 
when the guy is just too big. Yeah. You know, but I think he can handle 54. He's, you see, he didn't he didn't look that small in, in, when he was in there with Spence. And right. Spence is a big welterweight, you yep. know, and um, you know, and um, Jamel Cholo around about like the same size as, you know, um, Earl Spence, but probably just a, a tad bit thicker. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, um, you know that that just fight just shows more interest, you know, bad blood, you know what I'm saying? A little bit more interesting than him fighting Canelo or him fighting Javante, you know, so. I think it make a little bit more sense. Last question on this topic before I move on. Would you would you think or would you like to see a rematch between Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, but at a higher weight class, 154 pounds? Mm, that's, that's you know I like to see them fight any any time they fight, you know. But you know it it, it um uh. If if they fight, I'm gonna look at it. So you know right. it's you know um, it's whatever them guys want to do to me. You know um, they fight each other, they fight each other, or they go on to fight someone else. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel you on that. Uh, David I'm, Benavidez. I'm not for the down. I'm not for the down because if they they go right back and go at it, they're just yeah. giving us what 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 the old fighters used to give us. You know, yeah, good fights. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, I'll take my head off if they fight again. Perfect. David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre. What's your thoughts on that fight? I like that fight, bro. If, if, see if, you know, Demetrius Andre can, you know, handle the pressure, mm -hmm. you know. But, and, but um, Benavidez got to also deal with, you know, um, Andre um, awkwardness. Yeah. The way he throws his shot, so. I think it's a good. I think it's a good matchup. It's just, uh, you know, Andrea's got to be 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 ready to 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 get pressured like that to 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 be ready to move sometimes. You know, because yeah. he just can't stand there and trade with Benavidez. You know, so you got to so, stick and trick him. You know, so so let me ask you this because I think it's a fine line between movement and then standing your ground, right? Because I feel like. Caleb Plant, that was probably part of his downfall. He moved, or at least tried to move the entire fight. And I think at some point it just wears you down in the second half of the fight. Do you well, pick your times? You you sometimes, sometimes you gotta, you gotta know when to move and and and, 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 and sit there and earn your respect, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You still move, but you gotta earn your respect at some time. Yeah, that and makes. You gotta show sense. the judges that you are fighting. Yeah. No. Perfectly. Perfectly fair. The last question I want to ask you, we had a fight this weekend between Anthony Joshua and Robert Hellenius. That's the same opponent that faced Deontay Wilder. And there are a lot of talks about those two individuals getting in the ring, let's say late this year, early in 2024. What are your thoughts on a potential fight between Deontay Wilder and uh, Anthony Joshua? That's a fight that many people have been wanting to see for years. Yeah, everybody, you know, always wanted to see them guys. And, and when it comes to the heavyweights, you know, um, I think it never dies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think people going to always want to see it because the the big guys, they drop bombs. Yeah. So they they would love to see that matchup because, of of course, the blood, the bad blood yeah. from from the previous years, you know. So I, I, I like it, you know what I'm saying? If you don't. If they don't, if you don't fight Andy Ruiz and all that, you know, um, I wouldn't mind seeing Anthony Joshua and um, Deontay Wilder go at it. Now, both gentlemen have, to some extent, new coaches, Deontay Wilder, Malik Scott. I mean, he's been around for now a couple of years. And then, of course, Derek James is now with Anthony Joshua. Have you seen improvement in both of these fighters since they've gotten their new coaches? Well, not, um, uh, Sometimes you just can't, you know, change a change a fighter, man. Yeah. You just can't change a fighter. They they gon they gon sub you back to their old ways. It's about what what he's learned new. You right. know what I'm saying? They gonna fight the they gonna fight the same, but it's just what have they learned new to add on to what they already knew. You know. Right. That's all that is. They're not gonna change their styles or nothing. 
they're still going to fight the same. It's just what have they added on to, to their game. Let me ask you this. This is the final question because I've always been curious about this. As a fighter, is your style built upon the person that initiates training with you? So like your first trainer, do you get that style from them? Or is it something that's just developed innately in the fighter? So you were a very slick fighter. Did that, was that because, because you didn't fight like your dad or anything like that. Was it, was it just innate? That's how you fought? Or was it just partially your trainer or a combination of both? It was just, it was just, I was, it, your, your styles picked you. Yeah. It's just the style picked me to, to be a, um, a slickster, you know, um, I could I could still I could sit and, and and fight, but I prefer not to get hit, you know. So right. it's just it's just um with a box is just what you what what's your what your fight style, what it, it chooses you. It chooses you, you know what I'm saying? And you just you get at you get good at and great at something, a certain style, you just stick with it. Perfect. Well, Corey, man, I, I appreciate you for joining us again on the Angry Man podcast. Uh, always very insightful analysis and commentary, and hopefully we'll be able to get you back on again. All right, no problem. I do anytime, bro. All right, man. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Please. You too. Later.